بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Continuing with the verse number 25 of chapter or surah Amma The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Describing the Rasaq, the lands that is mentioned in this verse, as narrated by Abu Sa'id and it's reported by At Tirmidhi and others, and Shaykh Al Arnaut rahmatullahi ruled it as a sound narration. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, if a bucket of this Rasaq, one bucket, was to be thrown over people in dunya, it would make the entire world stink. The entire earth would stink as a result of one bucket. It would ruin people's lives due to its smell. How would the case be for someone who is actually drinking it? So, this was what they will drink in hellfire. So, what are they going to eat in hellfire? Allah Azza wa Jal says in chapter Ad Dukhan, verses 43 through 45. <laughs> طعام الأثيم كالمهل يرمي في البطون which means indeed the tree of Zakum is food for the sinful like murky oil it boils within bellies Allah described the shape of the fruits of this zakum tree mentioned in this verse. And he gave a description that has a, a very strong negative impact on people. Allah resembled it to shaitan. Though people don't know how shaitan actually looks, but it is shaitan. So anything looking like shaitan is something that's going to be rejected. That's going to be connected to evil. That is going to be connected to ugliness. That will be connected to anything bad and everything bad. Allah says, Sixty-five of As-Safat. Its emerging fruit is as if the heads of the devils. Now, how does that taste? This is the description. That's enough to turn anyone off from it. But how does it taste? Allah mentions everything. Allah mentioned everything in the Qur'an. Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the Qur'an and revealed the Sunnah. It is worthy to mention the narration in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أُوتِيتُ الْقُرْآنَ وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَهُ I was given the Qur'an and the like of it with it which is the Sunnah. As we mentioned in the beginning of this course, in the first couple of sessions, we, we mentioned that the Sunnah 
complements the Quran in the understanding of what is needed and the instructions that Allah Azza wa has given. And this is one such example. Allah Azza wa tells us the taste of this tree through Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the sayings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibn Abbas narrated, and this is reported by Ahmad and Shaykh Al Albani, Rahmatullah Alayhi, ruled it to be authentic. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and listen up, he said, oh, if a drop of the juice of Zaqub, a drop, a single drop, was to fall on earth, it would make the lives of people bitter and will ruin their livelihood. Then he continues to say, so how would the case be for those whose only food is going to be that tree itself? With regards to this Zaqum, Riyah al-Qaisi, one of the pious predecessors from our Salaf, may Allah have mercy upon him, was given food one day. So he ate a little bit and then refrained, stopped eating. So the host gave him more food and he said, I haven't seen you eat enough. Why don't you eat more? So he cried and he said, How can I fill my stomach knowing that Zakum is waiting? The man took the food away and he said, You live in a different world, meaning you're concerned is different than normal people. Normal people would go on in their lives, usually not thinking, not giving heed, not remembering anything of the Akhirah. When we hold a glass of water, we don't remember the scalding water of hell. When we grab a bite to eat, we don't remember Zaqub and work on protecting ourselves from having it becoming our food. But these people, these pious people, always reminded themselves with the Akhirah and lived their lives accordingly. Allah says in verse 26 of Surah Amma, what they will be suffering from, food, drink, heat, smoke, what have you, all of that, Allah is saying that this is an appropriate recompense. They deserve that. They earned that. They worked for that. So, they only get that. It's a just, fair consequence resulting from what each person's hands earn in this life. Allah does not oppress as little as a small ant size or weight. So everything one will see on the day of judgment is going to be the consequence of what he's done in his life. So no one else to blame except ourselves. And Imam al-Baghawi says, there is no greater a sin than associating and disbelieving in Allah. And there is no punishment severer 
than hellfire. And therefore, this is in return for this, for the disbelievers. As for the sinners of the believers, it is a consequence of their heedlessness, their negligence to the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. They did not glorify Allah when one sins. He does not glorify Allah whilst he's sinning. Because had he glorified Allah, he would have refrained immediately. Even if he weakened, he would have weakened and sinned. He would stop and refrain and say no. Allah Azza wa Jal is greater than me disobeying, displeasing him. Subhanahu. So in other words, this, this verse is simply t telling us, you get what you earn. And what you do, you will see the consequence of it. And you will be dealt in accordance to how you lived, and how you acted, and what you said, and what you intended. Let's give two examples. Materializing this. Al-Hajjaj was a tyrant. He was a ruler, or a governor rather, a Muslim governor, who was an oppressor. He killed more than 120,000 Muslims. And it was reported that in one go, he killed 40,000 in the Haram. Right? And he used to long for bloodshed. He was just bad. Plain and simple, he was bad. He was evil. And one day he wanted to kill, one day he wanted to kill Saeed ibn Jubay. This righteous scholar. So, he started mocking him and said, Saeed, you choose how you want me to kill you. So Saeed looked at him and smiled and he said, No, you choose how you want to die. Because as you kill me, Allah will kill you. So, I don't want to narrate the, the entire story, it's a little long. At the end, he instructed people to kill him and he was killed. Before he died, Saeed said, Oh Allah, don't enable this man to kill anyone after me. And sure enough, this man, in, according to different narrations, one says three days, one says five, and one says fifteen, but the maximum was fifteen. Between three to fifteen days, Allah Azza wa Jal made him suffer something that is extremely strange. He felt cold, so cold that nothing affected him. To the extent that he used to put his hand on the fire, his skin would burn and he would still feel cold. So he would suffer twice. He would suffer that coldness and would suffer the burning of his skin. And then Gargarin spread in his body and he died. The consequence of killing was killing. That's in dunya besides Allahu A'lam what is awaiting him in the hereafter. During his sickness, he sent to Al-Hasan, Rahmatullah Ali, asking him for help. He said, I told you not to touch scholars and you killed Saeed. This is the consequence of that. Before I give the second example, Abu Dhar, may Allah be pleased with him. And this is reported by Abu Nu'ayn and Shaykh Al-Albani ruled it to be a sound narration. Said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, just like Thorns do not yield fruits. Likewise, sinners will never be admitted 
into the abode of the righteous. There are two paths. Each path leads to the place of its dwellers. So whichever path you choose, whichever path you decide to take, would lead you to that. Meaning either to the abode of hell or paradise. So if one remembers this before he transgresses, before he oppresses his own body and his own self by disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal, if one remembers and reminds himself that whatever I do here, I will certainly see the consequence of. If we are mindful of that, brothers and sisters, trust me, a lot of wrong things that we do, we won't do anymore. Just like the consequence of evil is evil, the consequence of good is good. One great example of this is Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Prophet Ibrahim suffered and was thrown in fire for the sake of the religion of Allah azza wa jal. So he subjected himself to torture, punishment. Not just any punishment, but fire itself. They built a fire that was so huge that whenever birds would fly from a high distance up, it would burn and fall. And then they threw him in it. What is the consequence of this perseverance, this calling for the sake of Allah? Allah Azza wa Jal changed the fire. Kulna ya nahu kuni bardaw wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Allah commanded the fire to be what? We said, O oh, fire be coolness and safety for Ibrahim. If it was to turn cold only, but not safe, he could have suffered its cold temperature. But Allah made it cool, so it doesn't burn him, it doesn't harm him, and safe. So he walked out safe, untouched, unharmed. Again. The consequence of evil is evil, and likewise the consequence of good is good. We will conclude with this and resume in the following session, insha'Allah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiruka wa atubu.